As you can see, I'm almost done, but before we get into the build, I want to show you something fairly important in my opinion. So let's get right to it. As you can see, the lead screw will be held in place with a bearing, then there is a precision shim, and then there is a lock collar. But the problem with this thing is if you screw it in place and then, for example, place something on top of it, you can see that this thing is getting moved because this screw is penetrating the surface level right here, as you can hopefully see, yeah, perfectly visible. So that is a problem that needs to get addressed. It's not that hard. It's a bit tedious. It's definitely more work. Just screwing it on would be nice to have, I guess, but should be no problem. I started with this side, took my L piece to align the lead screw. Then I took a Sharpie. Actually, let me demonstrate this on the other side. Okay, it's all the way on the other side. Bearing goes in, opening up that lock collar. Take a look where this screw is. Take a Sharpie and then you mark the spot probably right there. It's looking good. And I just recommend to slide out the lead screw and it's fairly easy to work with it. Right here, there's a Sharpie mark right there. And now we take a file. This has a diameter of around five millimeters. And then you see the threads are going this way. We just go the other way, basically around 30 to 45 degrees. And make sure that this is a metal file. A wooden file would not work on this hardened steel. And then start filing away. And you need to go at least as deep as the threads are. You actually need to go a bit deeper. Well, if you want to get it flush with the surface, okay. That's already looking good. Now I'll just turn it just a bit and keep on working my way around. Okay, now the other side. Okay, that should do. That's what it will look like or what it should look like. As I said, it might be necessary to go a bit deeper, but we will see in a second. Oh my God, I'm so out of breath. That's kind of sad, probably right there. And the cool thing about this, it actually has two purposes. This might not be really ne that necessary when it gets to this actuator build, but it was for sure necessary for the C-beam, for the big C-beam CNC. First of all, as I said, it's going to hide this screw. Mm, almost. You need to go far deeper. But the other cool thing about this is that you can actually tighten the lead screw with this approach. Because when we take a look at the groove, if you go this direction, then it will basically clamp up the lead and make it tight. Just don't go overboard with this approach. You don't try to twist it with force. You just, you loosen it up, then twist the lead and the lead is actually going to stay in place. And what will happen then is you basically have this groove. This side is the end and the screw would usually get centered in the, right in the middle. But then you twist the lead, which will move this thread in this direction. Then you fix this screw and then it will center itself and also compress the lead. That's the principle basically. So you move this groove along, screw it in, it will center itself, compress the lead. That's how to tighten up the lead. But yeah, that's the thing. That's how to hide this thread. And that's basically the only issue. The rest is really easy and it's a lot of fun. Initiating. Welcome back to my daily grind. Create yourself is what you'll find me doing every day and every night. No time to lose. One day, one step in the right direction. I'm Chris and I'm only here to show you if I can do it, you can do it too. Welcome back to the vlog. It is Sunday, another day, another chance to push hard. And the topic for this vlog is the C Beam Actuator built. So let's get it by the way. All the DIY projects right here. Watch them all. But before we get started, love goes out to all my subscribers. Thank you for making my love special and worth living to the max. So let me try to give back with a sweet, sweet video. So yeah, as you saw, it's done and you also already know what's up with this thing, with this issue. These sets are just so much fun to build. It's like Lego. It's really simple. The resources are top notch. It's all in video format, so it's perfect. I can definitely recommend these builds. The belt actuator is even simpler, of course, but this C-beam is also a very easy build actually and if you plan on ever building a CNC you might start off with actuators if you see a use in them of course anyways so here they are looking so good blacked out I love it this is the belt driven actuator you can check out the build right here and that's the assembled c-beam but before we get to that let's get act let's get to the freaking build I'm done with the build, but I <laughs> I messed up the recording. I tried to film a time lapse, but I actually filmed 120 FPS slow motion video. Anyways, it took me one hour and five minutes. I think this build could be done in half the time if you don't go for this fancy screw flush approach that you saw. But yeah, other than that, I did not treat the C-beam and it's super apparent that this is not a 90 degree angle. Right here, for example, I probably hardly visible on the video, but the light actually shines through. But I think this is not a massive problem for this actuator. Again, the idea for 
for this is that this will be the base for a camera slider so that doesn't matter but just be aware of that oh my god check this out i just positioned the camera perfectly check out this gap right there no 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 this is triggering my ocd so that's it right here looking so good i was wondering like why did this thing come with the small wheels i was expecting something like this but no the wheels are actually inside of the c beam which is so freaking amazing on the cnc you get two wheels on the outside two and two so eight in total on this actuator you only have four wheels four of the small ones these are the bigger ones they are really small but this is so amazing because it's actually a bit smaller than the c beam so you can actually mount something right here and it won't interfere with the build plate and as i said over and over it's looking so dope like blacked out this is amazing <laughs> i think this is looking way better than the silver v-slot rails like they're looking good as well but it's just looking so much better yeah and lastly as i said countless times as well this is the easy part because what's next is of course to install a motor driver separate driver i might use these l brackets and mount this thing right here maybe for all the electronics and then of course build another slider frame i already partly did that you can check out the vlog in which i did it right here i think this was the t-nut review the t-nut comparison but yeah that's it so far with this build video i mean it's so funny that i will soon have three sliders <laughs> it's crazy and this one with the c-beam oh my goodness this is gonna be a good one believe me i plan on using esp32s for grbl oh my goodness what the heck ronin what are you doing three huge nema 23 motors with this u approach u frame approach anyways it's gonna be good next update you can find it right here but yeah that's it so far with this build as i said i can recommend it for sure but yeah that's enough progress for today smash that like button the way i smash this build and you can do this too if this makes sense by any chance whatever bang the bell like crap pop, to never miss diy projects check the recent news on chrisviral.com and yeah that's it for today i will see you tomorrow